Welcome to the Uncle Hack Podcast, where dudes pretty much just talk dude shit. It's a great day to be one of the phobics or one of the is. I don't know. What, what's happening out there? Wow, how happy are we? Oh, we are very happy because this weekend, May 21st, the Danger Room is back. After a month out in Ontario, we haven't been able to just do our monthly show that we have down in Calgary, Alberta, May 21st, down at the Danger Room in Calgary, Alberta, at the Comedy Cave. Tickets available at DangerCatShop.com. Wow, did I sound like a radio host? Did I? Probably because I spent the weekend with uh, ex-radio host. Jason Ellis got the opportunity to open up for Ellis Mate. That's right, Wolf Mate. I spit a lot when I said that right there. You probably heard it. Even, you know, you probably felt it even in the car. You're like, holy Christ, he's got some saliva in him today. What a loser. Not Ellis, me. Uh... Was it, it was it was great, man. You know, uh, many years I've spent uh, sitting inside the pickup, listening to that man uh, babble on uh, the waves of radio through Sirius XM, and it was uh, it was it was sick to share the stage with such a fine gentleman. You know, some people ah, oh, he's gotten woke. Well, so have I. Me too. Okay. I watched, you want to know what happened to me the other day? I watched the town hall meeting with Trump. And when he said that that woman was nasty, he called that woman nasty. And I was like, oh, you should have said way more. Wake up. You know what I mean? I don't know what, what is it with woke? Why are we always like fucking uh, woke? I'm awake. You know what I mean? (laughs) I'm awake. (laughs) What if we... What if we take it over and being woke is just being rude to women again? Why don't we bring that back for a minute, you know? We got a fun show ahead of you, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, the big one, this is going to be fun. We're going to close with this. A, uh, a teacher suspended after a student dressed as a KKK member for a history project. That is fun. That's, that's, that's good news. You know, because the KKK is thriving these days. You know what I mean? Like, their numbers are through the fucking roof. And we can't be having some kid mocking the Ku Klux Klan in a, in a fucking school like that. So we're going to touch on that. We got we to gotta dive deep and make sure that nobody else gets the bright idea. Uh, you know what is kind of funny? The only person I've ever seen wear a Klan suit was a black guy. There, there was like two brothers that lived in, and I don't mean that like brothers, you know what I mean? They were actually brothers, and they lived in, in Tabor. Uh, I won't say their names for the sake of the show, I don't know. But uh, the one thought it was a funny idea to be a Klansman for Halloween one year. And this is like, uh, I'm talking like 2008, 2009. Great bit as a black guy, you know, you pull, like he takes the hood off, and uh, voila. Gotcha. And in Tabor, you know, that's a real hit when the black guy dresses up in a clan suit. Not great move. It's always a good. That's like uh what's it, what's like the white guy version of that, you know? What's the opposite? It's like a it's like a funny t-shirt for a white guy. You know when you're on vacation in Mexico, you go on one of them destination weddings and you walk by the little Spanish fella selling the silly t-shirts. It says like two-seater with an arrow pointing to the dick and the face. You know, that's a good ha-ha. Those ones always crush. Uh, you know, it's really like, my asshole hurts from all the tacos I ate today. And I'm not talking about my mouth. You know, this asshole is on fire. And it's an arrow pointing to his asshole. That's always a fun one. You know what I mean? Like, that gets a big, huh? You walk into a room with a t-shirt like that. It's a funny little saying. That's the white guy version, I believe. But apart from that, uh, you know, all right, fucking beat it. Uh, we had a good time Sunday. I was feeling it, dude. I was feeling it. Went down to the watch party for the Edmonton Oilers outside of the rink, having a good time. You know, everybody's getting pissed up, trying to celebrate. Started out hot, didn't end so well, but I'll tell you what, my, end, my night ended great. I went to... 
my my favorite casino out on the Enoch Reservation, down at the River Cree. Uh, and, and and you know what? And I'm not being disrespectful when I say this. Okay, as a white dude, and you want to you want to go drinking with the natives, dude. You better buckle up. That's a that you got to be ready for war when that happens. This is you know like that's it's a it's like when you try and spar. The more experienced boxer in the gym, the more ex- experienced fighter in the gym, you got to you gotta mentally prep for that. And I didn't. I didn't. We just showed up, decided, to, you know, game's over somewhere, you know, where are we going to unwind? Where are we going to, you know, take this loss and try and drown it a little? And and we just so happened to have a few cocktails with White Cloud's old man, and he's a true beauty. That was a, that was a good time over there at the River Cree. I love me a good time down there. And you know what? I haven't drank that hard in a minute, and it's a good thing. You know what? I'm a firm believer. I needed that. You know what I mean? I needed that. A lot of a lot of people always uh, fucking see. Here's 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 the thing: is uh, I always get this from time to time. Oh, you're sober now. I'm not sober. Okay, I just don't believe in having one beer. I don't believe in having a couple drinks. You know what I mean? And taking that in a literal sense, not like how we. Uh, express a couple drinks. Uh, you, you understand what I say. When I say a couple drinks, every listener of this podcast understands that we're getting fucked up. You know what I mean? And I don't, and hey, you want to come over for a beer? No, I don't. I don't want a beer. I don't want to go out and have dinner and just have a drink. That seems like a waste of time. Why? Why? Would it, why would I tease myself? Okay. Why would I tease myself? Like that. And I don't mean like, like tease me in like a lap dance situation, like putting the pussy in my face. No, 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 no. I understand that. I can differentiate this. I mean, like, yeah, she doesn't love me. This is for my entertainment. You know what I mean? I I like this. I like, it's not a tease. This is entertainment. I just get to view it. Instead of looking at it on a screen on my phone, like a loser, I can pay whatever amount of dollars per song and have it right there. And it's perfect. It, It just, it's like art. You got to appreciate it in the flesh to really understand how much it means to you, you know? But I don't view liquor the same way like that. I don't. I think it's a waste of time to just tease yourself with one beer. So every now and then, I pull out I pull out the race wagon. You know what I mean? I pull out the sports car and I let things rip. And no other no better people to do that with than than my fucking fellow natives you know i thought they hated me but i guess not i'm back in uh, the good great well the fun ones the fun ones don't don't care it's always the fucking hmm you know and that goes for all races the the hmm and we'll talk about a couple of couple of arms crossed white women that get upset over everything with our first article of the day but prior to that we're going to be talking about letting the cannons roar and why it's healthy for your aura you know what I mean? Nothing de-stresses a human like completely depleting your si- uh, system with copious amounts of alcohol. And, and it's just like, you know, you got to shed that skin from time to time. I'm a firm believer in that. And and sometimes it, you plan it. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it just comes out of, you know, left field and you're pissed drunk, having yourselves a wonderful time. You're hurting for a few days, but you know what? You got to shed that skin. You got to be a phoenix every now and then and just destroy your liver with an absurd amount of booze and you just gargle down everything. The nice thing is, is that I'm, uh, now that I'm off the cocaine, I don't deplete my serotonin, so I'm not fucking like borderline retarded. Actually, I, I am that sober, okay? But I mean like send me to a different level, a different tax bracket of fucking handicap by... Dipping into the nose nachos, you know what I mean? So it, it it's nice. It's nice. And and I feel refreshed. I'm de-stressed. I fucking shedded some skin. I'm back in the saddle again, you know? And I don't mean that by drinking every single day. I put two nights, two nights in, got it out of my system, and now I'm good. I'm good to get back, uh, back at her. And I think everybody's got to do that from time to time. Even if you don't drink a lot, just pick a weekend, get it, get blasted. You got to you got to hit a system reset. You know what I mean? Clean the hard drive. You know, sometimes you got to think of your body like a machine, right? They always say your body has to be a well-oiled machine. And exactly, I truly believe that. It's like when your computer has too many files on it, starts to get a little slow. And then uh, the booze comes in. It's like an antivirus, wipes your hard drive clean. 
You know, you might forget your wife's name for three days, but that's okay. That's fine. That's all right. You might forget that, uh, you know, it, maybe it's a one day, two, th- two, four, whatever. Whatever the bender is to reset the system, you get that done. And so what? You might forget uh, it just was your kid's graduation and that only happens once uh, in his lifetime. But that's just the way life goes. Sometimes you got to take a little self-care, you know? You see the ladies in the tubs and doing their little going and getting in their nails done and whatnot. How the fellas have a little me time, a little fucking unwind, you know, a little self-care. It's like we got to wipe some memories from the hard drive. You got to kill off some brain cells. That's how we do things. You know, it keeps it keeps us from uh, invading countries, you know. It keeps us from getting some ideas about storming the capital. You want that again? I mean, it looked fun. You'd have to be drunk to do it, but uh, hey, maybe that's what happened. Some people were just shedding a little, you know, a couple brain cells, cleaning the hard drive, and all of a sudden somebody in the midst of a few drinks got a bright idea. Let's go take a piss on Nancy Pelosi's laptop. Hey, I'm all for that. Those guys are doing a little self-care. That's okay. That's okay from time to time. You know what I mean? It's like uh, over the weekend, the Canadian Tire hosted, well, they didn't host it, but a few guys thought a parking lot and setting up some fuck judo flags. You know what? I'm all for that. That's a little self-care. You got to get out of your system. A couple black ice loggers start yelling at some uh, brick and mortar strip malls. To get out the, your political frustration, why do it at anywhere else but a strip mall? It only makes sense to me why you would do that. Because, you know, you can kind of view drinking in a parking lot, playing Twisted Sister's Greatest Hits in those moments as, like, reasonable when it's in a parking lot like that. But if you do it outside the, you know, the House of Commons or any sort of legislative building, all of a sudden it becomes politically motivated and the RCMP's got to release some horses and trample some grandmas to make a statement. And then we're all sitting there being like, what the hell just happened? We are trying to have a good time, shed some brain cells and get back to normal here. And you guys just come in and Totally Lion King, like stampede everybody that's just trying to have a good time, you assholes. But that's uh, yeah, but that's that's a talk for a different day. The first talk that we gotta have: white women are as set. You know what I mean? I kind of ruined the surprise by saying that, but uh, you know what? No, I I didn't because as soon as I read this headline, you know what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna play a game called Guess the Reporter's Race. That's going to be the new uh, game we play here. It's a CBC article in Manitoba, and it says CBC investigates. Nobody investigates harder than the CBC, other than Rachel Gilmore over at Global Global News. Uh, Manitoba to conduct review of indigenous-themed art after sculpture in Premier's office deemed inappropriate. All right, first up, Joanne Levesseur. Let's play Guess the Race. Oh, she doesn't have a she doesn't have a pick. So what we gotta do, we're gonna double click on her name and we're gonna go look up Joanne Levesseur. And what do we have? Oh fuck you. Fuck you. Just show it. See, one day, if more of you would just subscribe to the Patreon, maybe I could pay a goddamn producer for this oh would you look at that ladies and gentlemen white joanne levesseur the cbc journalist who's upset over indigenous sculpture inside the premier's office is caucasian all right what about our second our second journalist on the article that was putting in a deep investigation Caroline Bargo. Well, would you fist me and call me Susan? Also a Caucasian who co-hosts an internet talk show in Toronto and then worked at various stations in Oshawa, Sudbury, and Toronto before landing in Winnipeg in 2007. Since joining CBC Manitoba as a reporter in 2013, she has won an award for her work on crowded jails and her investigation into Tina Fontaine's death led to charges in the child welfare system. Carolyn, you dog you. 
She does. Uh, she's got a hint of Italian going on there. Bargo. There's a little bit of French, I'd imagine. Bargoat. But regardless, pretty fair skinned. Now let's get into the article on why white women are upset. That's going to be the new headlines moving forward. Uh, instead of CBC investigates, it'd be like, why white women are upset over shit that people don't care about, so they write articles that nobody's going to read other than my stupid ass because I like making fun of people who try to make uh, themselves seem like they are a great person for doing such, you know what, I'm wrong here. I'm wrong here. I am in the wrong. This person put their heart and soul in here to try and just be like, listen, you as a cracker shouldn't be owning indigenous sculptures, okay? That's racist. But somewhere along, uh, along those lines, there's probably some homophobia inside there. Art experts say sculpture is cultural appropriation and depicts stereotypes of indigenous peoples. Uh... Premier Heather Stephenson being interviewed in her office on January 11, 2023. Oh, wow. We're finally dusting this one off. January, February, March, April, May. Five months later, the, the white ladies of Manitoba finally put together a piece that'll take down this goddamn racist the province is conducting a review to ensure all Indigenous-themed artwork displayed in minister's office is created by Indigenous artists. This comes after CBC inquired about a statue that had been in the Manitoba Premier's office for decades, but has since been removed and will not be placed back there. Art experts, ooh, who could that be? Art experts, Art experts, let's play another game called Guess the Race of Art Experts. Criticize the porcelain figurine titled Blackfeet Beaverhead Medicine Man. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. For cultural appropriation and depicting a stereotypical image of indigenous people. In a statement on Monday, Sport, Culture, and Heritage Minister Obi Khan. Come on, Jesus Christ. Said, we take concerns related to issues of cultural appropriation very seriously and will respect the advice of experts when it comes to the appropriate display of, of indigenous art. Khan also indicated a review would be taking place. Boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy. You know what I mean? These are serious issues. You know what I mean? Homelessness on the rise, uh, fentanyl addiction on the rise, the Chinese flooding our streets with their fentanyl to ensure that, you know, the streets are a little crazy. On the rise. And how do we solve these problems? By making sure there's no goddamn cultural appropriation taking place inside the borders of Canada. Boy, oh boy, you know... I was about to take the transit system today, right? I was about to take the transit system today. And, and if you think that I didn't take it because uh, I was fearing for my life, I was uh, like, I thought that maybe I would be shanked for the very small amount of change in my pocket, possibly get an iPhone stolen off of me. You're wrong. You're completely wrong. See, when I was walking into the LRT station here in Edmonton, I had noticed there was some art on the wall, okay? And if you want to guess what kind of art that was, you go right the fuck ahead. But I will say this, that art, you know, that art that had bloodstains and feces and piss marks all over it, that, that, that had that, that art piece that I seen, that culturally appropriated a certain group of people inside of Canada that had homeless men fornicating underneath it did not make me feel welcome, okay? It didn't make me feel good as a cracker trying to ride an LRT system infested with violence, feces, and drug addiction. 
And I did not feel comfortable stepping onto a LRT system inside of the city because I seen depictions and artwork that was racist and completely insensitive. And if you think that that the fear of my own life by traveling on that on that fucking train, on that train, was the reason I didn't get on it, was because of that artwork, you're correct. Unreal. The audacity of white people to to attempt art of somebody else's culture. Now, now I'm not gonna stop. You know what? We're going to, moving forward, once a year, anybody who isn't Caucasian has to uh, display themselves in public as a caricature of what they would think a white person is. I want to see full-on white face, suits, um, you know what I mean? I want to see cowboys. I want I want every race of, of, other than white people to be mocked for one day so I can feel good about being on this land. You know what I mean? Because like when I was in my dad's nutsack and I, I, and I fertilized my mom at, mom's egg by being the fastest swimmer, I knew that I was, uh, I was deemed for trouble, right? I, I didn't want to be on this land, you know, because I have a decision on where I'm born, okay? And where I can uh, live out my life, right? As a white person, we get we have that ability. It's it, a lot of other people don't have that, but we as whites do. And the fact that I chose to be in Canada is just extremely inappropriate on my behalf. And I apologize to those that it has affected over the years. You know, I I couldn't feel worse. Okay, I couldn't feel worse. I feel like. I feel like uh, I hold in this internalized hatred of myself. You know what? If I felt even slightly better, I'd be the walls of Epstein's fucking island, you know, of the little palace on Epstein's island, you know? And that's like the level of like, uh, of malice and uh, evil that sits inside of me. It's me... Okay, me with my internalized anger of myself and, and, and how I view the world and how I feel, I just feel awful all the time, right? I feel worse than the walls, if they could talk, of Epstein's palace on Little St. James Island. That's, that's the measuring stick here, okay? So when this type of stuff happens, like when, when a sculpture created by a Winnipegger, Helen Granger Young, has been on display in the Premier's office since 1988 based on historical photos, I see that and I say, you know what, we got to round up these politicians and beat them with branches of an oak tree. That's what we have to do. For study, not displayed, Professor. These kinds of work are not shown publicly and they're not appropriate for public office. Gerald McCaster, a professor at OCAD University, formerly Ontario College of Art and Design. Now let's play a little game of, this is the expert, Greg McMaster. Oh, let's get a little extra in there so we know. A professor... Let's play the game. Gerald McMaster. Guess the race of Gerald McMaster. Oh, we're closing in. Oh, wow. What do we got here? Something different. I believe he's indigenous. Hmm. This might be the first one. Gerald McMaster. Very white name. You, you confused me. I was going to say Puerto Rican, areas of expertise, cultural studies, curatorial studies, history and aesthetics, contemporary indigenous art. art. Okay. Uh, do we have the race? Do we have the race? We're scanning, scanning, scanning. No race. Doesn't say it. McMaster is a very cracker name. Oh, there's a picture of him right here. Oh, 
scholars may want to look at a piece like Blackfeet Beaverhead Medicine Man. That just sounds like uh it sounds like something that you know you know like the the old trope or the old gag of like Chinese people throw the fucking change down the stairs to name their kid, Chin Chong Chong Chang, like the old Pat King bit that we heard. Shed light on stero- stereo- uh, stories of stereotypes and stories of appropriation, stories of voice. This is upsetting. I was really hoping that this guy was going to be white. Okay, here we go. He is a Plains Cree from the Red Pheasant Cree Nation and a citizen of the Siksika Nation. Ah, damn. Damn. Well, (laughs) you handcuffed me there, Gerald. Was not expecting that. According to government policy, the purchase, maintenance, and placement, disposal, storage, and security of artworks making up the government art collection are the responsibility of the Department of Sport, Culture, and Heritage. Oh, so it wasn't even their fault. See, it's going to get to the point where there is going to be no art because these suit dummies that sit around and think that they know best what how we're... Uh, you know what I mean? Like... No matter what we do, there's always going to be something that somebody or s- that that's sitting around ready to criticize it, right? It doesn't matter if it's a joke, it's a song, it's a piece of art like that, like a f- in the physical form, a painting, a sculpture. No matter what, there's always somebody just sitting around waiting to put their two cents in. And it's ruining it for everybody else because now... I feel like the vast majority of those, like, of different races, different cultures, aren't sitting around being like, well, that offends me. No, because they have other problems to deal with other than a statue or a sculpture that's been sitting in a fucking room since 1988. But that day, that day, somebody seen it and was like, oh, I think I'm feeling a little upset that there's a sculpture in a premier's office rather than what is the premier up to? What are they doing? What policies are they putting forward? Why am I so fucking broke? You know, nobody asks those questions, but you see that and you're like, ah, target acquired. Time to ruin someone's fucking day because I Just don't give a shit about anything else rather than being a complete asshole and making noise about something that the vast majority, and when I say that, probably 99.99% of the population is going to sit around and go, you know what, you're right. I'm going to put aside the problems that I have today And we're going to take a little dive down identity politics and make sure everybody else is upset as I am in this moment. God almighty, it's getting insufferable at this point. You know what I mean? Like nobody can just do anything anymore. We're just sitting around. The future is just going to be HR departments is what it's going to be. You know, uh, once the robots have taken over, you know, everybody, even then, HR is just going to be a robot. And it practically is at this point, if you're looking at it through the lens of social media, right? You do something a little inappropriate on social media. You know, you say something a little offside. Maybe you put a video up that TikTok TikTok fucking guideline losers that watch that. And you're like, oh, some fucking guy is sitting here being like, fuck you. No, it's just, it's all AI. It's all AI. They just scan and look for words, trigger words, and they can scan fucking photos now they, they they monitor everything and if it flags in the system it is immediately and you're like and we're so stupid like a vast majority of people are so dumb they don't understand that it's just robots that are flagging all this in the system and they'll be like fuck man i posted something on your page and then you flagged me like i'm sitting around giving a shit what other people have to say about me you deleted my comment I don't care what you say on the internet. I say wild shit all the time on the internet. And I'll fucking, you block me? Yes, I blocked you. That's what I did. I blocked you. That's, 
your your opinion matters so much in my life that I just couldn't handle it the other day. You know, it was like I was sitting there and your opinion is on the same level as having uh, an indigenous sculpture inside a premier's office. And I looked at that and I was like, you, we got to get that out of here. You know, we got to get that out of here. Someone might read that and think I'm actually a racist. That wouldn't be fun, would it? I kind of I got a laugh out of this there the other day. Somebody like commented. Speaking of comments, I love and, and hey, fire away. Call me whatever you want. That's why we have hate mail, right? We have hate mail. Throw some hates in the comments for all I give a shit. You know, that's what we need. We need to get it out of our system. Everybody gets upset that they, well somebody commented on my phone. Who cares? You know, the only thing. That uh, I try, look, I'm a positive guy, right? I, I try to be a little positive from time to time. And some guy wrote the other day, this guy is a known racist. Somebody said that in a comment section, called me a known racist. And all I could think is like in that moment, well, it's a better than being unknown, right? At least everybody knows, you know, I'm trying to get my name out there so I can sell more tickets to shows. So it's good to be a known racist rather than an unknown racist, you know? Who would you rather go see? Who would you rather buy tickets to? This guy over here, known racist, performing May 21st at the Comedy Cave in Calgary, Alberta, or the unknown racist, who we don't even know who he is. He's just out here firing racist shit. At least you know where you can buy tickets to with this guy, the known one, you know? And that's my promo for the day. <laughs> Getting that off my chest. Speaking of known racists, let's get into it for our second article of the day. We love articles. That's what we love around here. We love just going through the news because, uh, you know, I take the heavy lifting off finding all the fun stuff. You know, this is this is fun stuff. And then we sit here and I yell into this microphone for you guys to sit around, listen to, get angry, upset, mad at me, mad at the news, whatever it is. Emotions. We got them. Let's use them. Here we go. Pulaski County teacher suspended after student dressed as KKK member for history project. Why are you laughing at that hack? By Dustin Massengel. Okay, let's play. Let's play our famous game. All right, everybody. On the count of three, we're gonna say who we think Dustin Massengel. Uh, what his race is. All right. Now, if you're with folks and you're listening to it, on the count of three, say it out loud. One. Two, three, white. Dustin Massengill, photo, uh, a feature writer, sports. Here we go. What do we got? What do we got? I don't know. We. Let's go to images. What do we got here? Dustin Massengill. And would you look at that? We got ourselves a cracker. We got ourselves a nice little, or maybe not. I don't know. Either or, it's white to me. Anyways, let's let's. Uh, there's a little video here that we're gonna we're gonna watch together. We're gonna dissect it. I'll let it roll through. Then we're gonna go through. So two minutes and thirty seconds of your life is going to be dedicated to listening in the past few years to, to some people talk. Then we go. And we dissect it all together. At Willa Pulaski County, teacher is suspended and under investigation tonight for allowing a student to come into school dressed as a KKK Grand Wizard. LAXA team's Ricky Sayer shares how the community is reacting in the LAXA team big story. <laughs> how the community is reacting. With the school year nearing a close, one Pulaski County school is down one teacher. That teacher should be ashamed of herself or himself. The superintendent tells us a teacher allowed a student to come to school dressed as a member of the KKK. <laughs> Give us a full 360, stand up with it. Oh, it stopped recording. Other students shared video taken on a bus. The costume was part of a history project on historical figures. I don't know how the student even thought that it would be okay to even ask to do something like that. Grandparent Jane LeClerc says it's all the more shocking considering Black Lives Matter and other similar protests in the past few years. Why would a teacher actually approve something like that? I don't understand. I'm outraged. I was shocked. <laughs> um, I'm outraged. I'm a little mad about it. 
Kathy Townsend is a community organizer who has helped organize local Martin Luther King marches and Juneteenth events. The KKK represents hate. As simple as that. In a statement, Superintendent Patrick Richardson said, it sickens me that this has occurred and embarrassed not only me, but our school district and community. This is harmful. If I, I used to be, when I was little, scared to even see pictures of the KKK. So could you imagine the students at Southern Middle that aren't white children? We spoke with one eighth grader with his parents' permission who said he was in the teacher's class. I see there's no reason for the teacher to be in trouble. Jackson Clark says the assignment was picking a historical figure to dress up as, adding the teacher approved what students would wear ahead of time. There was no racist movement behind of it. It was all like, I mean, there was black kids in the classroom, none of them. They all thought it was good. Nobody felt targeted. Or you have to learn history to make sure you don't redo it. But Townsend says a clear line was crossed Holy and the shit. teacher should be fired. In this climate nowadays, in 2023, she knew better. And I think that it should be no tolerance. You when think? it comes to racism, zero tolerance. A costume she feels represents hate that should have no place in a classroom. In Pulaski County, all right, Sayer, let's go LAX to the beginning. This county is, teacher is suspended and under investigation this is, tonight this is for too allowing good. a student to come into school dressed as a KKK Grand Wizard. LAX 18's Ricky's Grand Wizard. It's a KKK Grand Wizard. He's in just bed sheets. That now. Uh oh, what? What? What's that? Are we about to get in trouble? We all know the Grand Wizard wears a red uniform, didn't it? You know, we, it, one thing about high schoolers, and especially what in the eighth grade? Not even high school, middle school. In middle school, a kid dressed up a, a kid, a kid. Sayer shares how the community is reacting in the LEX 18 big story at eleven. This is the big story. This <laughs> down in Kentucky, Lexington, this was the massive story. This is a big story. This is a huge story. With this. Holy shit. News outlets. I tell you, the smaller community news outlets that, that are down in the States, man. God bless them. Without this type of entertainment, I'd have nothing to laugh at. School year nearing a close, one Pulaski County school. They even show like a sheriff's, uh, you know, they showed the sheriff's car outside to be like, listen, this is a big issue down here at the high school, okay? Somebody came down and, uh, a, you know, a teacher approved that this little son of a bitch comes in here, even though like probably mocking it, I would assume mocking it. But let's, let's hear what the parents have to say, right? No, listen. Okay, listen, we're going to have, what if a drag queen did it? What if a drag, what if a drag queen came in as a character, you know, that was like a Southern belle, you know, and it just was a little, you know, like you look at it and you're like, oh, there's a lot of white cloth on there, you know, that, the, the and then they just tightened up the, cause you know, drag queens put a lot of makeup on, right? And they go for it, right? So what if they just covered a birthday hat in white cloth and put it on top of the head and came in as like, uh, what would be like, what would be a good, fun little drag queen name that, that we could, we, th cause that's the only way we can, you know, get the message across to the kids that it's wrong is we got to have a drag queen come in dressed as a Ku Klux Klan member or a characterization of it. That would not only piss off parents, but also Klan members. Cause we don't stand for that gay shit. Right? So this is like, this is a perfect way to educate the children on why racism isn't good is we take a, uh, a black drag queen, we put them in a Ku Klux Klan outfit, right? Inspired by events that took place in the past, you know, like, well, uh, we'll, we'll put a, we'll put a nice grand wizard outfit on and we'll sing songs, uh, you know, like, like, uh, the Confederate army kind of, you know, here we are to fight the war today, war. Those little jingles that they had back in the day, and we'll have them parade around the classroom so we can mortify the children on why racism is bad and, I'm like, why is this guy's dick hard, you know? 
We'll confuse the shit out of the kids. That's what we got to do. He's down one teacher. That teacher should be ashamed of herself or himself. The superintendent. <laughs> the soundbite. That teacher should be ashamed. I don't even know the whole situation. Who did it? Who approved it? No, I know nothing about the situation, but that person should be ashamed. Tells us a teacher allowed a student to come to school dressed as a member of the KKK. Give us a full 360. Stand up with it. Oh, it stopped Just the worst. <laughs> Other students shared video taken on a bus. The costume was part of a history project on historical figures. I don't know how the student even thought that it would be okay to even ask. God. Jane Leclerc is a grandparent. I don't even know how the student thought. <laughs> to do something like that. Grandparent Jane LeClerc says it's all the more shocking considering Black Lives Matter and other similar protests in the past few years. Why would a teacher actually approve something like that? I don't understand. I'm outraged. Bad statement right there. I'm outraged. I'm outraged. I ain't got nothing going on ever since those riders down in Los Angeles decided to go on strike and they don't want to write for, you know, someone like Stephen Colbert right now. And I can't watch late night television and have a good time while sipping back a few glasses of my favorite cheap wine. Because these little riders down in L.A., now I'm forced to get out here and, and share my opinions rather than just sit down and enjoy my drunken ass on a sofa in my living room watching Stephen Colbert. And then all of a sudden, James Corden's gone. What fat faggot am I going to watch now? Huh? You tell me. What fat gay man am I going to watch do musicals in the street, disrupting traffic in Los Angeles. But instead, now I'm forced to like pay attention to the local news because those riders ain't on strike. So what am I doing now? I had to, I had to head down to the middle school. Let everybody know that Jane's upset. In fact, I'm not just upset. I'm outraged. I'm outraged. I don't even know if it's a him, a her. I don't really have the whole gist of the situation. All I know is I seen on TikTok. You know what TikTok is? You want me to, you, you know what TikTok, okay, you got an understanding what TikTok is? Well, TikTok used to be an app where kids get together and do a little lip sync and a dance to their favorite songs and they'd get incredibly famous and get all this money from these giant corporations and not until recently, our old asses, you know, because we went and ruined Facebook, Facebook ain't fun anymore, so what do we do? We downloaded TikTok. TikTok. But now we like to go on there and share our political opinions and try and, and compete with everybody on who's right and who's wrong. And I just so happened to see a little video of, 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 on a school bus of a kid dressed up in a Klansman suit. And I'll tell you what, don't know what the whole situation, don't know what's going on there, but I am rather upset. So if you want to hurry up and get those writers some money so I can go back to watching Stephen Colbert and uh, if you could find yourself another obese homosexual, maybe like a Tim Dillon and put him on late night television, that would be wonderful. Then I can go back to enjoying myself again. And I, now I don't see what I mean. Now I'm out here on the news. Unreal. I was shocked. Um, and then I'm a little mad about it. Kathy Townsend is a community organizer who has helped organize local Martin Luther King marches and Juneteenth events. The KKK represents hate. As simple as that. <laughs> well, I'll be fucking damned. I had no idea that the numbers of the KKK were on the rise. I had no idea. I had no fucking idea. I didn't have a clue. You know what I mean? Down in Kentucky, I didn't realize that the, you know, the numbers were just thriving these days. You know, it'd be funny is if like the Ku Klux Klan made a comeback and they're just like, listen, we understand that, you know, things in the past might have been a little uh, unsettling for others. We're changing our ways. We're going to be called the Ku Klux Inclusive. Okay. That means all races, all religions. Except for the Jews, <laughs> all 
are allowed to join and have we'll have parties. We won't light crosses on fire. We'll just light pallets on fire like normal people do. You know, when you're having a little backyard barbecue, we'll just light pallets on fire, maybe a park bench or something like that. Whatever it may be, maybe not a park bench because you know what I mean? What what are all the homeless going to sleep on? What are all them, you know, because the, black people don't like to work. What are they going to sleep on? <laughs> It's like, oh, 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 Cletus, you're going back to the old ways. My, oh, excuse me. I guess white people can be poor, too. My apologies. White people might want to sleep on that bench as well. See, we're changing our ways around here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And this is why I will never, ever, ever be allowed on CBC. The, 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 see, this is the reason I, I'm setting myself up for a little bit of failure in the in the future. You know what I mean? Just to ensure that I never have to go the woke route because I've said too much. But then again, I could go on a major apology tour, gain a new fan base, exploit them for their dollars, drag them out to shows, make my money. Hopefully it's enough to retire and I can exit, you know, North America. My presence will still be known over here, but then in, in like a, in a small deserted place, Maybe in Southeast Asia, you know, they don't care. They're like, oh, you're racist. You have money. No problem. They don't care. They don't care how racist the money is. Are you paying? You know what I mean? Are you buying the mango salad? If not, get the fuck out. Simple as that. In a statement, Superintendent Patrick Richardson said, it sickens me that this has occurred and embarrassed not only me, but our school district and community. <laughs> this is harmful. If I, I used to be, when I was a little scared. You know, Dad, you, it, on a serious note here is like, it's so funny that a middle schooler showed up like this, like as a big fucking, it was definitely a mockery of it, right? You can tell by the idiot on the bus. He's like looking around like, hoo, hoo, you know? The shit is like, the the edgelord shit when you're younger is like anything that upsets adults makes it 10 times funnier. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, I think I talked about this last week or somewhere, but like the drawing of like swastikas on, on, on like binders and shit like that or in the back of like school notebooks, right? You'd always, you'd sneak one somewhere and then you watch your teacher go ballistic. Do you understand what that means? Represents? Blah, blah, blah. It was the outrage of the teacher that would make you laugh more. And you didn't know, like, I understand, like, the symbol doesn't exactly represent the most uh, uh, happiest of ways or, or a storybook ending that we can all praise. <clears throat> if you don't know how that one ends, boy, do I got a book for you. You know? But it is like watching kids upset adults is it's a it's a classic bit. It's a it's a gag for all ages, you know? You get you can have yourself a wonderful time just sitting here watching some adult grown ass people get upset over the actions of an eighth grader, okay? An eighth grader. Let's keep that in mind that this person is in the eighth grade and then they're like, Well, I don't know why the teacher would allow this, because like right now. It's kind of difficult to swim in the waters of a teacher. You know, you're like, ah, oh, fuck, if I tell the kid no, then what? Uh, I'm going to be in trouble. But it doesn't matter which way you go. The teacher's always like, ah, fuck this motherfucker. Ah. We always want to put the teacher's head on a post, you know? The teacher brings in a drag queen to be like, oh, fuck, look, they're normal. Uh-huh. And then like, this side wants to put that teacher's head on a post. And then everybody wants to play dress up these days is what I'm getting at. All the, even the kids want to play a little dress up. This kid dresses up like a Klansman, comes to school upset, you know? A grown-ass adult with a, can come in there as a caricature of a woman and sing and lip-sync some Lady Gaga greatest hits, right? And then the parents are upset even more. We're just all upset. Costumes really get everybody going these days. Hey, it started, you know where it all started to fall apart when they're like, hey, we can't have certain costumes on Halloween. And then they're like, oh, yeah, well, maybe I want to wear a costume all year round. How's that sound? To even see pictures of the KKK. So could you imagine the students at Southern Middle that aren't white children? We spoke with one eighth grader with his parents. <laughs> yeah, because it's, 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 here we go. That a boy, W-L-E-X, Lexington, Kentucky. We spoke to an eighth grader permission who said he was in the teacher's cl class. I see there's no reason for the teacher to be in trouble. With Jackson. I see there's no reason for the teacher to be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't have found like the, the one like kid that when you think like, oh, yeah, fucking 
about as fucking redneck as you can get. Got a nice sick mullet on him, flat brim hat. You know, like exactly what you think of when when you think of mud bogging. Okay, when you think of mud bogging, that person that popped inside your head. That's like exactly what this kid looks like, you know? Hell of a head of hair on him. I'll give him that. Hell of a head of hair on him. Clark says the assignment was picking a historical figure to dress up as, adding the teacher approved what students would wear ahead of time. There was no racist movement behind of it. It was all like, I mean, there was black kids in the classroom. None of them. They all thought it was good. Nobody felt... Yeah, because the black kids were probably laughing at it, making fun of it alongside the white kids. And it was like the one time. See, this is why adults just need to stay the fuck out of the way sometimes, because these younger kids, you know, everything's like shock value. When you're a young, uh, when you're a young adult, I remember being that. Right. And then there was always like you, you when you're the class clown. What do you do? You go for the bit. You go for the big laugh. And, and what's funnier than like mocking something like that? It, it's always been like that. And I know I'm probably in the wrong by saying this and like, oh, you think it's funny? Yeah, because nobody fucking does that anymore. You know what I mean? It's like blackface. It's like blackface. How many times are we still laughing at Trudeau in that photo of him in blackface? We piss ourselves laughing, you know, old old Johnny face paint over there. No, it'd be funny if Trudeau came up and be like, I can't believe a kid in that school would do that. It's like, you need to take the back seat on this one. I'm sorry, but... You got to kind of just like, maybe like, enough, okay? Enough. Wrap it up. Get it over with. You're out of your mind. But it is funny that they're like, you know who's going to have the pulse on this is the eighth grade kid, you know? he He's the one that we need to talk to ASAP Rocky and get the pulse on what the classroom was feeling, you know? All the, all the fucking black kids. Like I said... The, 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 when the black dude dressed up in the clan's suit for Halloween one year in Tabor, you know what I mean? Like everybody, like that guy murdered with that costume. There wasn't a person like when he pulled his, hey, and you're like, whoa, oh boy. Cause you know, everybody gets uneasy. What, nothing makes white people feel more uneasy than somebody that acting up a little racist in a serious tone too, being like, you know, like saying some pretty wild shit. And then you're like, oh fuck, get me away from him. And, and like that, and like, see, that right there is what puts some crackers on the edge, you know what I mean? And, and it's funny watching people feel uneasy, you know? It's funny watching people feel uneasy. There is something so hilarious when somebody starts getting nervous, like, oh, fuck, am I going to be attached to this at all? Oh, God, am I going to get in trouble now? I'm getting in trouble. I'm also getting in trouble for this, aren't I? This is not good. I don't know what I'm going to do here. This is, this, this is the end of my career. This is it. Targeted or you have to learn history to make sure you don't redo it. But the, the, the fucking funny part is, is he's the only one that made the most sense here. You know, you got to learn about history so you don't redo it. That does kind of, that, that's the most logical thing said in this whole article and 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 by the students making fun of it i assume in that classroom they were fucking roaring at that this is a great bit that kid crushed that was his time and now he's getting national press off that is that what i gotta do to sell out a fucking show do i gotta go down to a town hall dressed in a clan suit and just get everybody up in arms a local comedian dressed as a klansman went down to the alberta alberta legislative so just to start promoting indigenous art in LRT stations. Why he's doing this, no one knows. But meanwhile, I'm like, fuck, I got to get some ticket sales going on here. Fuck me. I got to make sure that this this old comedy thing works out. So what do I got to do? That's, if clearly this is, this is the way. This kid's just paving the path for me. So I appreciate that. Now I got an idea stored in my head that if uh, things start going south, I got a publicity stunt just sitting there, right in the back pocket, making sure everybody understands what I'm about. <clears throat> All right, our last thing that we're going to watch together as a as a group. This is fun. Miller Lite, you know, beer companies. Nothing nothing we love more than beer companies just making a solid stance, you know? That's what they're doing these days, hey? Big corporations making sure that 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 they plant their flag in the ground and they're combating things. 
like uh like feminism they're getting feminism back in in the in the race you know racism they're combating that because nothing nothing says we care like getting your father hammered and coming home and hitting your mom you know nothing says we give a shit like uh just just hey this thing right here that's destroyed families this little thing this little alcohol this little little can of alcohol you know this thing right here i know we were sexist in the past right well let's watch this let's watch this together here's a little known fact women were among the very first to brew beer ever how did the industry pay homage to the founding mothers of beer they put us in bikinis. Wow. Look at this shit. Wild. It's time beer made it up to women. So today, Miller Lite is on a mission to clean up not just their shit, but the whole beer industry's shit. Miller Lite has been scouring the internet for all this shit and buying it back so that they can turn it into good shit for women brewers. First, we turn the bad shit into compost. Then we feed compost to worms. Push out beautiful fertilizer. That good shit helps farmers grow quality hops. Which has been donated to women brewers to make their own really good shit. But there's definitely more shit out there. In your attic, in the garage, in your parents' basement. Send any shit you got into Miller Lite and they'll turn that into good shit too. Oh. So here's to women. Because without us, there would be no beer. So here's to women. Because without us... There wouldn't be complaining. Miller Lite. Unreal. Beer companies. I should scout. You know what? With, uh, with every controversy, there's a way to make money. So if you have any, so in, you know what you could do? Mail me the, all your sexist, outrageous beer posters. You know what I mean? All that, all that junk from the 80s, you mail that to me. And then I'm going to send it to Miller Lite and be like, hey, I want $1 million for all of this paraphernalia that you put out back in the day. I want $1 million or I'm going to, I'm going to sell it on the black market. Unreal. But you know what that, with that being said, you know what time it is. Oh, baby. As soon as you hear that hit, you get jacked up, don't you? You know that some hate mail's on the way. Our favorite segment, our favorite portion of the show. Email me, unclehack at dangercats.tv with the subject line, hate mail. Get it off your chest. It could be hate mail. It could be love mail. I don't even care. You could confess something to me. I'll read it out. And honestly, of course, I will never put your name in it unless you put your name in it. Okay? So, with that being said, hate mail. It's on the rise, right? We're upset. You know, we, we're upset that sculptures are in the premier's office in Manitoba. We're upset that an eighth grader showed up to middle school dressed up as a Klansman to give a presentation to a classroom full of diversity. You know, diverse students all laughed together at some kid dressed as a complete maniac that day as a Klansman, you know? So what do we do about it? We tell you to email the show. That's what we do. We tell you to email the show with your hate mail, and we just, we read it out loud for everybody to hear. You know, uh, we all got thoughts and ideas in our head, and we uh, encourage you to get them out because we don't want them festering because if them if that starts to fester, who knows what other problems are going to start existing on this planet. So get it out of here. Get it out of there. Get it out of there. Call the show. Fucking do whatever you got to do. Uncle Ack. Your advice from a couple months ago, episode 121, was the best fucking advice I had heard. Been having the time of my life since. It's not all about the tallest truck. And now it's an inside joke between me and my people. What are you, Moses? Getting a little drunk, getting a little pussy. Because that's what all of us young folk out, are out here to do. But, uh, but the other motherfuckers in the world are too uptight and just can't have fun. Ain't that the truth? I probably spent more money on your merch than I have my own mother, as you should. And I've been following you guys since you started. I just got to say, your comedy shows are better than Motley fucking crew. Despite your hate for politics, if the Danger Cats ran for premier of the province, I am sure convinced y'all probably win 30% of the vote. 
Like I said, you're a legend. Keep on doing what you're doing. Once again, Edwin. Well, thank you, Edwin, for emailing into the show. Uh, not necessarily hate mail, but we'll take it. You know, we'll take anything. We'll read emails. It doesn't have to always be hate. Just send whatever you want in. I don't care anymore. You know, I don't give a shit. All right, here we go. Some hate mail. Hey, Hack, go back to fucking grade three and learn how to read for fuck's sakes. Holy fuck, pick up a book. Jesus Christ, maybe a book on how to grow a decent mustache and some hair. Love you. Well, if there's a book on how to grow some a decent mustache and some hair, by all means, send me that way, okay? Because all I'm really riding on is sheer personality these days. It ain't looks, that's for sure. Because if it was looks, I certainly would not be doing this, of all things. I would be out of my goddamn mind to think that, uh, you know, that's what I got to do. I got to take, like, that female uh, approach on, on looks. You know, just start telling everybody I'm a certified baddie, even though I am a mutant of a human, you know? And our last and final piece of hate mail this week, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Uncle Hack, figured I'd fire off an email because I listen to the pod every week in the work truck and it gives a fella a lot of laughs. Got a couple of buddies to listen as well. Why, thank you. Because fuck it, is it ever funny? Gives me something to look forward to throughout the work week and helps me drag my sorry ass along uh, this absolute circus I'm employed at just felt like bitching and complaining about my job. It's not really that bad, but some days it makes a guy want to suck, start a Remington pump action and paint the ceiling like Picasso. Heard that, sister. I'm a heavy duty field tech ripping all over uh, creation, fixing broke down pieces of shit. That's fine by me. As I've always loved making broke down pieces of junk run again. However, the management and uh, unorganization is a joke like Christ on a cross. It's been me and another guy each doing like four people's jobs and it's really frustrating. God forbid anyone in the office help out a little bit and get parts and work orders organized and closed off in a timely fashion. Oh well, not my pig, not my farm. Just felt like being a whiny little bitch for a couple of minutes in some hate mail because it pisses me off when guys sit around at work and complain. Pull up your socks, grab your nuts, get the, get to work, and shut your fucking yap. Also, I fucked up the old back at work the other day, and it hurt like a bitch laughing, listening to the episode about the dance battle on the beaches of Normandy. So fuck you for that. Anyways, take her easy and keep her between the ditches. Cheers, brother. Well, thank you for that. You know what? That's certainly something I don't miss is uh, sitting in an office with a bunch of fucking people who somehow think that they are just good. They are a gift to God's green earth. You know, they all, everybody has ideas, right? Everybody has fucking ideas in their head. And you have to sit there and listen to them because, you know, since the invention of HR, right, ever since HR came rolling around, you know, let's invent a new job so that way the boss's daughter can feel like she's a part of the company, you know, let's invent a job so that way we can just put another desk jockey to feel important because, you know, we don't know how to talk to one another appropriately. That's that's what's wrong here. Is and, and what we need is a college or university educated individual to sit there behind a desk that just flips through a textbook and be like, well, it says here in section three, two dash one, A, B, three, using unnecessary slurs is uh is is is, is approval for dismissal you know you cannot speak to somebody in that manner but uh meanwhile we can just sit here and make up bullshit and, and and make you feel inferior because you know what look behind me there's a college degree on that wall and do you think it was just handed to me of course it was because college is fake You think that you can just walk into a college, get a degree in some bullshit job where you feel like you are important because your self-righteous ass just couldn't make something decent out of yourself? Of course you can do that. And why more of us don't is beyond me. You know what I mean? Like, why wouldn't you want to get... what What a bulletproof job that is. 
You know, what a bulletproof job that is on just being a cuck for the man. Nothing like just bend me the fuck over. I'll throw the book at all these gentlemen that decide to use words that, you know, might be a little upsetting. So for that, I tell you, sir, hey, good on you for just being, you know, like the rest of us and just putting your head down, getting the job done and just fucking letting your letting your thoughts, your feelings fester inside. And then you're like, hey, I know how to relieve this. You know, I know how to relieve this. I'll email the show. And then this other dickhead who has no regard to how the world actually works, read it out loud on his podcast. Interesting. What a, what a wonderful world we live in, isn't it, folks? And to that I say, for those that are uh, having a difficult time out there, Get fucking drunk. Just shed some skin. Get it over with. Hit a hard system reset. Go get fucked up. Tell the wife, you know what? I'm taking two days off. You need to take the kids. Because unless you want your husband talking to you through a fucking phone in jail and a glass between us, I'm going to need to go blow off some steam. Okay? Unless you want me to beat the shit out of somebody in traffic and spend two years in prison for assault... I suggest you just let me go and buy whatever case of beer isn't promoting some sort of garbage to shovel down my throat. That ground wow, women, women actually made beer first. Ah, oh, well, women, men can be women too. You know what I mean? Just let me grab a bottle of something that will make me forget I even exist for two days and I'll come back and I'll be a better man. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Uncle Hack Podcast. You know, we appreciate you uh, more than ever. And if you would like an extra episode, head on over to the uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash DangerCat69. An extra episode is there every Thursday at 3 p.m. when the regular episode drops. And you can also listen to this one earlier, 48 hours earlier than everybody else. So not only do you get two episodes a week, it's not just fucking bam, bam, you get this one earlier. How nice is that? All for the price of a beer. And guess what? You know what that beer is going to do? That beer is going to tell you how you should think, how you should truly think, <laughs> and how you should feel about certain subjects. You know, why not? Why the fuck not? For the price of a beer, you can get another hour of this. Isn't that nice? Anyways, see you next week, Thursday at 3 p.m., the Uncle Act Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Good night.